Hi there, I'm Dr. Stephen Fallon. Welcome to my video channel. What I'd like to talk to you about today is a problem that I will think will become probably more relevant and more prevalent as time goes by. And the problem is stripped heads of implant components. And I've had this problem I've encountered on two occasions for two different patients in the last uh, I don't know, three to four months. So that's what's prompted me to uh, make a little video about this problem because, you know, when you encounter a problem like that, you have to think about a solution. And so what I'm going to tell you is two different cases and two different solutions that we came up with. And the first case was basically a full mouth case I was doing and the case included one old implant crown that I had to replace and the crown was screw retained, it was a screw retained implant crown and when I took the composite out of the access hole and I went to take the driver and put it into the uh, into the into the screw head to unscrew the um, un unscrew the uh, implant crown the uh, screw head was moderately stripped like it just was it wasn't engaging so um, for that case I wasn't really sure what to do so I called uh, Roadsart Dental Lab because they have probably the most experience out of anybody I know with a variety of implant cases. This system wasn't one of the systems that I use commonly in my office, and the main system that I use is Strawman. So it wasn't a Strawman uh, implant or components. So I spoke with uh, Richard and Eric, and their suggestion was with this system, uh, they had some drivers that were just slightly larger than that screw head. So they suggested, let's try a slightly larger driver and it will maybe engage the screw head a little better and we could unscrew the uh, old implant crown. And so in fact, they sent me a, you know, they have a collection of drivers because they've been doing implants since the 80s and they sent me their collection of drivers and I found, finally tried out a few and I found one that was just slightly larger and I was able to unscrew the, uh, the implant component, uh, the implant crown and get the whole thing off. and basically discard that so that I didn't have that problem again and uh, take my f new final impression and complete the full mouth rehabilitation case. Um, the second case was actually a more difficult case. It was a, um, or a difficult problem to solve. Um, it was basically a case where the patient had, uh, it was a locator type attachment, um, an older version of the locator attachments and essentially the patient wanted to go from that to a bar because he wasn't getting very good uh, retention with the locator attachment design and uh, essentially it had it replaced a couple of times the inner inner uh, housing and didn't have great retention so he said you know I'd like to go to a bar and get a couple more implants in and get this more substantial and the problem I had was I just couldn't unscrew the uh, abutment on one of the implants one of them was fairly close to being stripped, but I was able to get it off. I just, you know, I, I felt it was close, but it came off. The other one, I just could not get that thing off. It was basically spinning inside the screw head. So um, there was really, uh, I, I, again, I, I spoke to Rozart and I asked them, if, because I wasn't familiar with this system either, if they had a screw head that was bigger than the screw head that I was using to get the abutment off, and there was nothing. So uh, the solution we came up with which worked quite nice, uh, potentially would work quite nice, I thought anyway, was uh, we would put composite on the screw head, into the, into the screw head, um, and stick the driver in and light cure the composite, and then the whole thing would be one piece and I'd just unscrew it. And we tried that with a light cured composite, and you know, the light just wouldn't get down deep enough in and around the metal components, so uh, it just kind of didn't do anything. <laughs> it had no retention at all. So I decided to um, try something else. So what I decided to do is um, I thought about it and decided, you know, the most, uh, the best self-cure only composite that I have in my office is core paste. So I have the old Denmat core paste. It cures very well and it's a fairly strong material. You know, it cuts nicely when I'm using it for uh, crown preps. So I decided I would micro etch the top of the screw head, I would micro etch my driver, and then I would put the core paste into the screw head, put a little on the driver, put it all together, and wait the five minutes for this to self-cure. And I essentially 
held on to the driver, tried to keep it really still because I figured if you start moving it a little bit, you're not going to have that locked in type of situation that I needed. So I held on to the driver for the five minutes, which was probably the longest five minutes of my life, just standing there trying to keep this thing really still. But uh, at the end of five minutes, you know, we have a little timer in our operatory that we time these things to set. And at the end of the five minutes, I kind of held my breath, <laughs> grabbed the uh, torque wrench, and sure enough, the whole thing was one component and one piece, and I was able to unscrew this implant abutment. And I actually have it right here. I've bagged it so that it was sterilized. And um, I've taken some pictures of it, so I'm going to put the pictures up in a minute and show you the pictures. And if you look, this is the whole thing in one piece. So you can get an appreciation for the way we kind of locked everything together. I don't think the driver is much good anymore. You could maybe, you know, melt the composite, get get it out of there somehow and re-clean the driver, but it's probably toast. You know, that's just the price of getting this component off. But uh, basically, you know, that is uh, that is essentially two ideas to help you with stripped fixture heads or stripped screw heads. Because I think this is going to be a problem going forward. You know, we have a lot of implants from the 80s and 90s that as we go forward with doing the prosthetic components over again, these will be issues. So I hope this helps. Um, if you have any comments, you can email me or uh, post them on my YouTube page or in January I'm going to have a new blog that's launched and you can post comments on the blog. So thank you for joining in and we'll see you soon.